actually, I think today I'm, I'm going to try something a little bit different. We'll uh, do something other than a subtitle. I'll go ahead and voice over this one. Um, I'm switching things up by filming a bus instead, uh, so I might as well switch things up and talk instead of do the text thing. Today we're heading to the Fair Park Station in Dallas to go to the state fairgrounds where the EarthX Convention for Earth Day is being held. There's a whole lot of stuff going on down there, but I, I'm coming today specifically to check out Dart's unveiling of their new electric bus uh, from Proterra that they ordered seven of. It's first one's delivered, wrapped, ready to go, and um, they've finished testing, or at least they've, they've got it tested to the point where they can drive it now out to the event, and I'm hoping to get a good glimpse of it now while it's uh, still nice brand new and still sitting still, and then my plan in the future is to get another video of it when it's in full service operation on the D-Link line. So we've now arrived at the Fair Park Station. Um, it's I've passed by this in my full rides on the green line that, that you guys have seen on my channel. Um, but this is my first time getting off and taking a look at it in at least a very, very long time since I was much younger and I went to the State Fair. And even then when I went, it was, it was either a school event or something that my parents would drive me to and it was when I was much younger. So it's it's been a long time. Um, before I head across, I'll go ahead and get a quick video of this train departing the station. And we will continue our way back. All of these people, the, the train did fill up a lot. It filled up at the Pearl Arts District Station where it uh, looked like a lot of people were waiting. I'm guessing they took a parking garage. But here we are at the main entrance. Everyone's kind of filing their way over. And there really wasn't any kind of ticket booth. It was There was a table that said, you know, uh, hey, last minute chance if you download the app, you can get free admission. Or if you've got the email, just keep walking. And, you know, really there wasn't anything special going on. You just kind of went through the gate and uh, everyone just kind of assumed you had pre-registered online. It wasn't it wasn't really that big of a deal, but then again, I'm I'm here at slightly later than ten in the morning, so this is right after everything opened up. So yeah, here here we are right at the main gate, and then I didn't want to film too much of people, so we'll jump to inside. Not many people walking around doing stuff. Again, everything just started, but making my way down to where Dart stationed at. Actually, at first I was following the signs for Dart and um, I ended up walking in circles a couple of times because the Dart arrows that were pointing me. I, I had arrows for Dart pointing towards the train station as well as the same Dart logo just pointing towards where the bus was. I never ended up seeing the bus at first. I just kind of kept walking around until I eventually found it, but I did get some footage of everything that was going on just to fill some time as I was talking. But eventually my stubbornness caved to curiosity and I got out the map and found out where the dart stuff was and uh, went in that direction. Actually, this is one of the ones where the arrow points towards the rail station. Actually, if, if I had turned around and gone the other way and walked about 300 feet like I'm doing right now, we come up to the bus. This is the this was my first look at it. I got a video of them walking up. By now it was probably about 10:20. It was still really early, so they hadn't even gotten the chance to open up the booth for it yet. But we'll take a quick walk around the outside of the bus. It's been a while since the last time I rode on the D-Link. It looks like the bus is slightly larger. And um, actually later on in the video we'll see. I, I believe it is larger than the regular D-Link bus. I think that's more the size of the regular buses that Dart has. I'm not an expert on their buses at all. But it's got the traditional D-Link looking wrap on it. It's very bright pink. It stands out. Nothing about it looks unusual as far as the electric part of it's concerned except at the very back of the bus. I'll, I'll get a look at it again. You can see through some of the vents there's some heavy-duty cabling coming down from the charging connector on the very top. 
I actually first heard about this bus while I was sitting on the Dallas streetcar. I was doing some research for it to to figure out more stuff uh, back in the video. I didn't know at first that it partially ran wirelessly. I, I just figured it ran on overhead power the entire time, but when I figured that out, I was reading it on Dart's website. That's when I actually saw the little banner scrolling across for the introduction of the bus. And uh, here we can see those cables going to the charging connector at the very top. But when I heard about it, I, uh, I made plans. I was able to visit and I actually wandered away to, to look at some other stuff and by the time I came back they had already had everything opened up ready to go. It looks like really all they did was just open it. I wasn't doing anything special but here we take a quick look at the inside back seat of the bus. There were some people talking up at the front and I didn't want to bother them. So we'll get another better walk through here in just a moment. They had the handicap ramp laid out so that people could come up inside of it. The cardboard boxes are where they plan on putting the fare box, but since this is a D-Link bus, it's not going to need one. Display there shows some information, the speed and the, I guess the power usage of the bus. And also another thing I was told, along with the fare box still needing to be installed, they still are going to install the plexiglass cover that protects the driver but now we get a better look at the inside of the bus from the very front. There's room up front to stand, and generally speaking, the bus is laid out exactly as you'd imagine. There's nothing too special about it. Um, it looks pretty similar to just a regular normal bus. Moving back up a little bit, we see the emergency door release for the middle door, as well as the fold-up seats for the wheelchair accessible front portion of the bus. And then sitting up here on top of the wheel well are some fact sheets for the bus. I brought some home so that I could read some read some of the facts to you. If not, feel free to pause the video. There'll be some stuff that I go over. And uh, I'm not going to read all the information off of them, but pause it. And uh, that was one of the stranger things. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I haven't opened it yet. It, I want to say it's a screen cleaner. It just looks like a little fabric cutout of a bus. Taking a look at the specifications, this this is from the Proterra company themselves. Just information about the bus. They've got a couple of different models of the bus that you can order. This one just being the regular FC series, the baseline model. And then on the other side we've of that one sheet, like I was saying, we've got the map of the dealing service. Nothing's different. They're doing the same route as before. I'm assuming they're just testing on this because this is one of the shorter routes that they've got and it's free so they probably get a little bit more exposure. We've got the different types of buses that Proterra has, that's their company overview that they've got there and then last but not least we've got another Proterra little, I, I guess you could call it a flip chart kind of thing. Just more information, I guess if you're interested in ordering a bus, it was kind of cool all the little packets that they gave out because some of this was seemed more for Dart than it was for us, but it's still interesting information nonetheless and I'll go over some more of it as we continue. Before I continue with the specifications though, I did get to speak with the representative from Dart. She offered to show me some stuff on the bus, one of which was opening and closing the rear door. Uh, there she was turning on the power to the bus. They left disconnected since they don't normally just leave them sitting around like this. She was going to flip the switch on the bus to run. It goes through a couple of checks and it takes a while to, I, I guess, think before it can start up and do its stuff. Uh, right now it's outside hazards are on and here in just a moment she should be able to close the back doors. and then she'll open them back up for me. Um, what I did notice was nice is that they've got the lights that light up the exterior of the bus and after I pause the video for a brief moment we'll take a closer look at the actual instrument cluster of the bus. I didn't get as long of a look as I would have liked but what we've got here is uh, the speedometer on the left it goes up to 80 miles an hour but the bus is governed to 65 in the middle is the main screen which looks like by default shows the main battery percentage, the estimated mileage, or I guess electric mileage that it gets, the current time and temperature, 
as well as the state of the two low voltage batteries that are on board the 24 volt batteries for powering the lights and other miscellaneous things. The state of the, I guess, electrical transmission of the bus and the estimated range. I believe it just says 100 miles, but I would imagine the only reason it says that is because the bus is currently standing still in park. And then finally on the on the right side, we've got the power usage of the bus. There's the charge indicator and then it'll also show you under normal usage how much power is being drawn from the battery. At the bottom there's a standard air gauge and the, the left gauge appears to be a fuel indicator although it just seems to mirror what the battery percentage indicator shows. And finally there are some buttons in the middle that navigate between the screens on that display. Back outside we get a glimpse of the out of service before the power to the bus is shut off and then the doors open one last time. And last but not least all the lights turn off and we get one last look as of the bus and the small little booth they have set up for information for the bus and some of the some more of the little pamphlets to hand out. And that concludes my first look of the new all-electric Proterra D-Link bus, and uh, now we'll be taking a walk back to the exit of Fair Park. One of the nice things that I uh, learned from the representative with DART was where the bus is charged, that they actually had just recently installed the chargers at the underground Dallas Convention Center station just outside of downtown Dallas. It's served by the red and blue lines, so... Uh, I'll go ahead and hop on a train and take it in that direction, and we'll take a look at the chargers they just installed. But before we continued further, I wanted to appreciate something I saw on my way in and I got on my way out. Uh, this brand new DFW rental car bus, which looks brand new, but I'm not sure if it was there to steal the thunder of Dart, but it was still entertaining nonetheless. And here comes our train. Arriving. Green Line. Train 2. North Carrollton Frankfurt Station. Two cars. For your safety, please stand back. Arriving. Green Line. Train two. North Carrollton Frankfurt Station. Two cars. For your safety, please stand back. Unfortunately, this isn't one of my regular train videos, so as much as it pains me to do so, I will be pretty extensively cutting the duration of my trip to the convention center. In the meantime, though, I'll go over some interesting facts that I saw about the bus. The biggest one that stood out to me was the fact that the electric motor on the bus is actually coupled to a two-speed transmission. One of them, the, f the first gear of which allows it to accelerate from 0 to 20 miles an hour in just under 7 seconds. And then the other one seems to be much more efficiency oriented, or to get more speed range out of the electric motor that gets it from 20 to 50 miles an hour in a much slower 32 seconds. Here we're going to take a quick break to stop at the Pearl Arts District Station where I'll transfer to off of this Green Line train. And uh, of course, as with everything downtown Dallas, the wind is absolutely brutal. And I suppose in my previous videos I never really mentioned it in text, but one of my favorite things about the Pearl Arts District Station is the countdown timer that they have that counts down until the traffic signal switches in favor of the train. And with that, our red line train comes right around the corner. That's the one that we'll be taking. That or the blue line would get us to the convention center station just outside downtown Dallas, the first one past Union, so it's, uh, it's not that long of a ride at all.
And as we come around the corner at Union Station, we see TRE-121 leaving, which I thought was kind of unusual given the fact that it was a Sunday. And as we skip to the last station before we have to get off, um, we enter the underground portion underneath the convention center. Off to the left here, it, it'll be hard to see out the window because of the glare, but that's actually where the bus is parked, the beginning of the D-Link route, and where the new chargers have been installed. And you actually can kind of see them where the D-Link is currently parked, and as soon as I hop off the train, we'll come around and get a better view of them. Now on the other side of the tracks, uh, we come up to the different bus stops that service this station. Most notable of which is the D-Link bus, which tends to announce its presence a lot while I'm trying to film an otherwise quiet video. This actual bus stop has a charger above it as well as the one behind it. They installed two charging stations for the D-Link buses and the signage for both of them still shows 722 for D-Link service. Coming up closer to the chargers we see that uh, it looks like there's some kind of plate that grabs on either side and makes connection with the bus and allows it to charge. The fast chargers charge the bus at 244 kilowatts, which is quite a lot of power, and um, they say that they'll charge in about five minutes. Here's one of the emergency stops, I guess, should something bad happen. I would, I don't know if I'd want to be near that thing if something bad was happening and it was pumping 250,000 watts into a bus. But at any rate, there's the button. We see some of the same looking high voltage cable coming down from here. I'm not entirely sure if that cable is delivering already rectified DC power or if the bus itself has the facilities to convert it to DC and then charge the bus with it. But at any rate, you can see that's the clearance of the actual thing as well as the length comparison of a normal D-Link bus. And, uh, that would come up to the back of the new sized one, so it's slightly larger. And with that, the approaching red line train for Parker Road will end this video. As it comes around the corner here uh, to bring me back to West End Station, where I will hop back on a green line and take it back home. As this train leaves the convention center station, I wanted to take a moment to thank you guys for watching the video. I don't have any more specific information about the electric buses. Um, I hope to know more as they go into regular service coming up soon in the spring. I don't even know when that's going to happen, but as soon as I find out, I'll try and at least get a video of it. Hopefully empty, maybe not, it just depends. But I wanted to ask how you guys felt about the new voiceover thing. Now sitting here at the end of the video, it, it took me a little while longer than I expected to edit, but then again at the same time, it took me quite a while to add the text as well. So both work. I think I can get used to either of them or maybe even talking in the videos. Not 100% sure. Let me know what you, what you think and what you like and don't like and I'll go from there. But once again, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next regular release on Thursday.